Welcome to Chow Mix. Imagine this. You come home from school or work and you can finally hop on that game you've been thinking all day about replaying. So you're playing it, having a great time, and you eventually hit that one level that just makes you go, I'm not doing it. I don't even want to be around anymore. Honestly, almost every video game I've ever played has that one level. We all know the one. The kind of level that keeps you in a state of dread as you slowly progress closer and closer to it. The level that, when you finally get to it, makes the power off button on your console look more entertaining than the level itself. And boy, let me tell ya, these levels definitely exist in Sonic. In this episode, we'll be covering the worst levels in each of the mainline Sonic games. And in the next episode, we'll be covering the best levels, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. It also helps me out a ton, so I'd really appreciate it. Anyways, let's go through each game and go over the levels that make me want to rip my hair out. A few ground rules to establish first. 1. I'll only be going over levels where Sonic is playable. So for instance, in games where there are multiple playable characters, I'll specifically only be talking about one of Sonic's levels. 2. Each worst level will be decided based on certain criteria, such as how frustrating they are, how unfair they are, how unfun they are, you get the gist. And 3. I'll only be going over mainline titles. No spin-offs, or else we'd be here all day. Sorry, Sonic Advance fans. So with all of that, uh, how about that Sonic 1? If you've played this game, you already know the answer. It's Labyrinth Zone, specifically Act 2. Come on, this entire zone lives in infamy, and it's for good reason. The majority of this level is underwater, which is probably the fast-track way of making it on one of these worst levels of all time list. But because of this, Sonic runs as if he's plowing through molasses, and you have to be careful about running out of breath. Not only is this just annoying by default, but it makes avoiding the rampant amount of traps all the more frustrating. Lots of sharp things suddenly emerging out of the walls to poke you, floors rising up to crush you, last second booby traps, all the fun stuff. And by fun, I mean absolutely terrible. Labyrinth Zone Act 2 has to have some of the most insufferable level design in all of Sonic, and that's that. Sonic CD has to have some of the more questionable level design out of the series. And this is no more apparent than in Wacky Workbench Act 1. Wacky Workbench, in general, is probably one of the more confusing Sonic levels out there. Not so much in a sense of where do I go, but more so why did they design it like this? It isn't even a difficult level, it's just blatantly frustrating and unfun to the point where you really question what they were thinking when making this. And I'm specifically picking Act 1 because at least by Act 2 you're used to the terrible gimmick this entire zone uses. That being the whole floor is lava gimmick, where you have to avoid touching the floor the entire level. Because doing so bounces you all the way up to the top of the level, where you then have to slowly navigate back down through a mini labyrinth of platforms, all while these coils turn on and off to attempt to shock you and enemies try to attack you. This stage's level design is essentially just you jumping from moving platform to platform, trying to avoid the bouncy floor below. So fun. Also, finding the hidden pod for this level is complete bullshit. You have to willingly crush yourself by this thing, which sends you through a secret tunnel to the pod. Why would anyone ever intuitively know to do that? That's like willingly putting your fingers under a hydraulic press just to see what happens. Anyways, Wacky Workbench Act 1 is just the worst, plain and simple. Sonic 2, my favorite game out of the classics. And the zone I dread the most whenever I fire this game up has to be Metropolis Zone. By Act 2, you're gonna be fatigued from the plethora of traps the level has laid out for you. These annoying starfish that shoot at you at awkward angles. These crabs conveniently placed in low ceiling areas, making jumping over them and avoiding their attacks almost impossible. And these praying mantis badniks similarly placed in low ceiling areas with an even larger projectile attack that makes getting around those crabs seem like a trip to Disneyland. So, you finally finish Act 2, and then it happens. The forbidden words scroll onto the screen and burn into your retinas. Metropolis Zone, Act 3. The only zone in the game to have a third act, and immediately following one of the most grueling nonetheless. Act 3 is the worst level in Sonic 2. The fatigue has already set in from Act 2, and Act 3 has even more shenanigans in store. Lots of cheaply placed enemies, projectiles coming at you from every angle, this thing that springs you into a spike trap, it's Act 2 but worse. And one thing that Act 3 has that Act 2 doesn't is a boss fight. Nothing too crazy honestly, but it's really just the icing on the cake of an already irritating level. 
Sonic 3, regarded by many as the first half of the greatest 2D Sonic game of all time. So of course, the worst level in this game is the one that lives in absolute infamy. Carnival Night Act 2. Listen, there's a lot of reasons this level is infamous. It's confusing, it bounces and shoves you around everywhere, it has a ton of obstacles that can randomly crush you if you're at the wrong place at the wrong time. And this is all while the soundtrack sounds like it's making fun of you. But the one thing that this level has that separates it from the rest is the dreaded Barrel of Doom. This seemingly harmless barrel has been known to completely stump and eat countless lives of unsuspecting players. And it isn't because it crushes or attacks you, it's because it has a gimmick so unintuitive that players will literally die from running out of time trying to figure it out. The thing about this barrel is that it's controlled in a way which is never explained in game. And you're only ever forced to use its gimmick in this one instance and never again. What most people think is that this barrel is moved by bouncing up and down like a trampoline. But what you really have to do is stand still while holding the up and down buttons to slingshot the barrel further and further in each direction. Once you know what to do, this barrel is nothing more than an incredibly simple stage gimmick. But if you don't know what to do, you're probably in for one of the worst Sonic experiences you'll ever have. This, along with the rest of the annoyances of Carnival Night Act 2, make it the worst level in Sonic 3. Sonic & Knuckles, regarded by many as the second half of the greatest 2D Sonic game of all time. This one's actually a really easy pick for me, and it's gonna be Sandopolis Act 2. There's a lot of really annoying gimmicks going on in this level all at once. The timers that need to be slowly pushed to be activated. The lights that constantly need to be turned on. The ghosts that slowly spawn in to attack you when the lights go out. And the rising sand looking to crush you like one of those hydraulic press videos. Man, this is like the second reference to these stupid hydraulic press videos. I think I might have a problem. This level is just straight up brutal. It's really easy to be a second or two too slow and get crushed by the rising sand, or run out of time and have the lights go off to get attacked by ghosts. So many little things that add up to make Sandopolis Zone Act 2 a really gnarly level to get through. Sonic Adventure. It's Sky Chase. Sky Chase is the worst level in this entire fucking Just kidding, that would be cheating. We'll go with an actual level, and that's gonna be Casinopolis. As much as I admire this level's charm with the cute little casino with the slot machines and the funny showers and the sexy cowgirl statue, it's a total grind fest. To get to the end of this level, you need to deposit 400 rings into this vault to form a climbable hill to get to the emerald. To do this, you have to go around playing pinball games with very questionable controls. If you play them poorly, aka you score less than 100 rings in a game, you'll be sent to the garbage dump. Surprisingly, this is where Casinopolis becomes more of an actual level, and I usually purposely opt to get sent here anyways, because admittedly it's a bit more fun than the pinball games and you can get a good amount of rings from it. But that's only if you know where to go, because this section makes you quickly pick one of three paths to go in, and certain paths have way more rings than others. If you don't already know the correct path for the most rings, you're gonna be playing a guessing game. And when that happens, usually it means you'll have to repeat this section a few times or play more pinball games to get the 400 rings. And besides, this level is mostly Sonic running through narrow corridors and using these fans to slowly float up through the level. Definitely not the greatest gaming experience of all time, and it can be really punishing to be unfortunate enough to get hit while carrying all of those rings. Sonic Adventure 2 has a worse level, and that worse level is Mad Space. But that's a Rouge level, so it doesn't count. The worst Sonic level would have to go to Crazy Gadget. Listen, I like Crazy Gadget, but that's because Sonic Adventure 2 is like my favorite game ever. So for most other normal people, this level is gonna be a bad time. I mean, what more do I have to say about Crazy Gadget other than gravity gimmicks? Other than the several annoying artificial chaos enemies and the pure length of the level, the gravity gimmicks have to be the thing I most dread getting to whenever I boot up the game for another playthrough. Throughout the entire level, Sonic has to pull these levers that change the orientation of gravity. There's sections where Sonic runs on walls and ceilings, and naturally the controls can be a bit sketchy. I will say, props to this game for doing something like this six years before Mario Galaxy, it's actually some pretty impressive technical stuff. But why did they have to do this insane gravity puzzle at the end? It's really it's really hard to go fast here unless you have a specific speedrun route to skip over most of it. And it's all over a bottomless pit so it's extra scary, especially since the controls get a bit weird with all the different gravity orientations. Listen, I wouldn't say that Sonic Adventure 2 has any absolutely terrible Sonic levels, but because I have to pick the weakest, I gotta go with Crazy Gadget because all of the above reasons. 
Sonic Heroes has a level that I absolutely hate, and it's unfortunately very close to the beginning of the game. That level is Casino Park. Casino Park is the first act of the third zone, and it is full, and I mean absolutely chock full of pinball tables, which is something you may have caught on to by now, but I usually tend to hate these things. And I have yet to play a Sonic game with worse pinball controls than Sonic Heroes. Sometimes you press left and you go left. Sometimes you press left and you go right. There is no rhyme or reason, only pain. And God forbid you accidentally switch characters and teleport back to the beginning. If you know, you know. Thankfully, Act 2, Bingo Highway, has a lot less of these pinball tables, which is why Casino Park is my absolute least favorite level in Sonic Heroes. Sonic 06 has a lot of levels that many would consider being the worst in the series. But if I'm being completely honest, and this is like totally off the record, I think Sonic 06 has some of the best level design in the series. The physics just suck. Anyways, 06 has a definitive worst level in my book though, and that's gotta be Flame Core. Trust me, if I could pick Silver's Dusty Desert, I would, purely because of the horrible ball puzzle. You know the one. But when it comes to Sonic levels, Flame Core can be an absolute nightmare to get through. So much jank. This wall that you have to run across with unwieldy controls that can detach you at any second, all of these sections where you can get randomly hit by falling volcano rocks, there's also fire and lava everywhere you can just get hit by or fall into. Flame Core is the prime example at a level that makes you want to chuck your controller at a wall. Many people are probably expecting me to tell them that the worst Sonic level in Sonic Unleashed is Eggman Land, but I'd actually disagree with that notion. Yes, Eggman Land is a very hard level, but I think it at least comes with an actual sense of achievement when beating it. Eggman Land is known for being one of, if not the hardest Sonic level of all time, and saying that you were able to get an S rank in it is something truly commendable. For something to be the worst level, I think that means you wouldn't feel any accomplishment for finishing it. In fact, you'd probably feel no positive emotions at all except for the relief that it's finally over, which is why my pick for this game has to be Arid Sands. To be honest, none of the daytime levels in Sonic Unleashed are truly terrible. It's just that Arid Sands happens to be the weakest. The level aesthetics, the music, the level design, there's nothing that really catches my attention all too much here, especially compared to the rest of the game. And it's not too much of a challenge, so I think that makes it a bit bland. This was very much a level that was kind of just there, and I never really had any deeper thought about it. But I guess it just goes to show you how strong the daytime levels in Sonic Unleashed are. The Werehog levels, on the other hand, I can go all day about how absolutely terrible some of these fuck- Sonic 4 Episode 1 has a little level called Lost Labyrinth Zone Act 2. Not only is this entire zone loosely based off of Labyrinth Zone from Sonic 1, that should tell you everything you need to know, a good chunk of this level takes place in the dark, with this little torch that Sonic carries around being your only source of light until you begin lighting up other nearby torches, which you then proceed to blow past in 0.25 seconds. And then you have these torch puzzles that quickly become annoying because a lot of the puzzle itself tends to be hidden in darkness. There's a lot of them, and this level just feels really stop and go because of it. But honestly, Sonic 4 Episode 1 is such a short game, I don't think I had enough time to develop a genuine hatred for any of these levels. It just so happens that Lost Labyrinth Zone Act 2 was my least favorite. I feel a similar way with Episode 2. Episode 2 is widely considered to be a step up from its predecessor. Despite this, I can easily tell you that Oil Desert Act 1 is the worst level in the game. Obviously, it's based off of Oil Ocean, which is one of my least favorite zones of Sonic 2, but not worse than Metropolis Zone Act 3, as I explained. Sky Fortress Zone Act 1 was a close contender, but I figured it'd be cheating to pick that, just like Sky Chase with Adventure 1. Oil Desert Act 1. Act 2 is also pretty bad, but what sets Act 1 apart are these annoying sections where you have to continuously use tails to slowly fly over these bottomless pits. The level aesthetics are also really ugly with the gross oil mines and pollution everywhere, but obviously the level design itself also isn't great. I know it doesn't sound all that bad, but just like Episode 1, this is a really small game and there aren't a lot of levels to choose from. I don't think either of the worst levels from Episode 1 or 2 are all too bad, but then again, none of them are all too good either. Despite what impression I may give off in some of my videos, Sonic Colors is a solid game with a lot of really fun and replayable levels. But one level that I refuse to replay unless I'm going through the game normally and I'm being forced to go through it is Starlight Carnival Act 3. This level is mostly an auto-scroller and the entire time you're collecting rings and avoiding enemies, all while bouncing up and down on a spring trampoline, very slowly inching forwards. It's not even that difficult of a level, it's just so slow. And that is not the thing you want to be in a Sonic game. This level drags on for what seems like forever, and it's just so mind-numbing that I've accidentally died because I stopped paying attention. And when that happens, you gotta go through it all again. Not an enjoyable time. Sonic Generations is probably one of my favorite Sonic games, period. 
playing through each level made me remember why I loved Sonic, and there's so much care put into all the tiny details that makes me proud to be a Sonic fan. And I'm proud to be a Sonic fan, where at least I know I'm free. That is, until I reach the last stage of the game, Planet Wisp Act 2. It's funny because this level starts out decently strong, with a very scenic route in a big 3D section through the first third of the level. But then you start to realize that the other two thirds of this level are completely in 2D, apart from a brief quick stepping section midway through. Now, 2D sections aren't inherently bad, but you have to admit that there should have been a bit more back and forth between 2D and 3D here. The 2D sections essentially boil down to you climbing up this tower by riding these slow minecarts and using wisps to break through to the top. And they went with the most boring wisp too, Red Rocket or whatever the fuck his name is. Classic Sonic got the pink wisp that lets you spin dash on walls, which automatically makes Planet Wisp Act 1 superior. At least it wasn't like Cube or something, I hate that guy. Anyway, such a sad way to end off an otherwise near perfect Sonic game. Sonic Lost World is a game. Sonic Lost World is a game that I really don't go back to replay a lot. I respect that it tried doing something different, but its gameplay just never really kept my attention. On top of the game being not so interesting, I definitely also remember certain levels being straight up infuriating. Frozen Factory Act 2 is one of those levels. Imagine this, Super Monkey Ball with terrible controls and ice physics. On top of the bad controls, there's so many factors here that can cause you to fall off the narrow pathways. The yetis that shove you, these chickens that try blowing you off course, these crabs that shoot missiles at you. You have to navigate through all of this with, again, terrible controls. I cannot emphasize how bad the controls are here. My least favorite level from Sonic Mania is going to be an unpopular opinion. It comes from one of the four completely original zones in Sonic Mania, and it pains me to list it as the worst. Listen, I love everything about Press Garden Zone Act 2, except for playing it. The art direction and music are all phenomenal, but man are certain parts of this level really annoying. The level can be designed in many places with a very blocky, grid-like structure, meaning you're getting caught on walls and losing all of your speed. And there's this whole ice mechanic where objects and even Sonic can be encapsulated in ice cubes. It usually acts as an annoying hindrance and makes the level design even more blocky and difficult to navigate through quickly. Listen, the boss fight at the end of the zone almost single-handedly saves this level, but I think the level design itself justifies my opinion. From purely a gameplay standpoint, Press Garden Act 2 has to be my least favorite level in Sonic Mania. The worst level in Sonic Forces is all of them. Just kidding, there's some decent levels here and there, sometimes. But there's a lot of not so great ones. If it weren't for being an Avatar only level, it would definitely be Aqua Road. But again, it's gotta be a Sonic level, or a classic Sonic level in this case, and I'm going to pick Iron Fortress. Everything about this stage is bad. A big gimmick in this level is spinning around and launching yourself off of these rotating platforms, and because it relies on the game's physics, because we all know how great the physics from Sonic Forces are, controlling where Sonic jumps is a nightmare. There's also this awful auto-scrolling section, and it's just like, why would you ever put in an auto-scrolling section in a Sonic game? There are Sonic games where Sonic is literally so fast, the camera can't keep up with him, so why would you constrict his movement to a slowly scrolling camera pan? Not even the music is safe in this level, and that's usually a given for Sonic games. Yes, the music being not so great goes for a lot of the classic Sonic tracks in Sonic Forces, but I think this one might be my least favorite track in the entire game. Alright, let's finally talk about the latest and greatest Sonic game to come out, Sonic Frontiers. Sonic Frontiers, while having several huge open zones, does still have more traditional levels scattered within in the form of cyberspace. I actually really enjoyed these, but there were a few that seemed a bit rushed or, I don't know, not quite fine-tuned? And the level that immediately comes to mind when talking about the worst Sonic Frontiers level is Stage 3-5. This level, like many other cyberspace levels in Frontiers, is meant to emulate a stage from Sonic's past, and this one is supposed to be Savannah Citadel from Sonic Unleashed. A fine level by itself, but man, they really botched the controls here. You see, since Sonic Forces, the boost titles got rid of the drifting mechanic, and the entire point of Savannah Citadel is to drift along these tight corners. So Sonic Frontiers literally had to program in a drift specifically for this one level, and this feature is never used again in any other level in the game. The drift in Sonic Frontiers feels like it was designed with duct tape and paper clips, and it makes getting through this level a strange experience. It's not very difficult, it's more so embarrassing. It's just very confusing why they chose to recreate this level if they didn't have the one feature it depends on. Listen, I wish drifting was in Sonic Frontiers, but not like this. 
The Sonic series has a lot of great levels, but as we all know, you can't make an omelet without breaking a few eggs. These terrible levels walked so the greats could run. Or I guess it's Sonic that's doing the running. Anyways, let me know in the comments if you agree with my list or if you had any other choices for some of these games. That's gonna be it for today's video. If you liked it, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content similar to this. Thank you so much to all of my amazing channel members, and with all that being said, I hope everyone has a fantastic day. Peace.